Welcome everyone, this is gonna be the ZVP late game guide, uh, another sub goal video and I'm gonna explain in this one how to micro the different scenarios of uh, the Zerg army, how to hotkey your units and what the easiest way is of doing things and also I'm gonna talk about which army composition exactly you need in which different stages of the game. Uh, so first to get into late game your best uh, options are a Hydraling Bane and Roadshider Lurker, those are generally the two best defensive uh, armies. Hydra Roadshider Lurker is not that creep dependent, but it is uh, very posi positioning dependent, which means you always want to have a concave pre setup before the Protoss takes them to you. Hydro Link Bane is just in general very strong on creep, and you should come from multiple different angles. And real quick, I'm just going to show how to micro Link Bane, even though it might be very obvious for a bunch of you. So. Uh, wait, I'm I'm just gonna make you a standard Protoss army. Uh, I have Sol with me, by the way, for who's gonna micro the Protoss front. His Protoss offers is also above 6k, and he's always making fun of the Protoss ability to play late game. So he actually uh, he has quite decent control. I uh, I even tested it right before this. <laughs> That's why we're already in this for seven minutes. In case you can see the timer. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this now. Generally, what how you wanna go get into late game with this is you want to make as little bailings as possible, but a bunch, like just a couple, so you can flank them already. And then if you see your opponent actually commits to a push, you spend all your gas into bailings. The strength of this army that I have right now, right? Wait, go back a little bit. I'm gonna pull back the spores. There's not supposed to be any spores here with this army composition. I'm gonna talk about the spores a little bit later. Okay, now now we can go. So the way you go is you just, usually you will not have this much space, but you, you go like this, you send from the banelings first, from multiple fronts, then the rest comes. Banelings are on a separate hotkey. And that's the fight, let's do that again, because what, what, actually, what you're actually supposed to do is with this composition you should focus quite heavily on creep spread. It is very important. So I have I have my bailings on an extra hotkey, but also hotkey with my main army, right? So as soon as he steps on creep, usually you want to come from behind. Usually there's not that big of ones around. You go in with the banelings, and yeah, there's not much else to say. You should you should clear the high templars. This was a better fight for him because I actually moved in with my zerglings as well. Let's do the, let's do it again. As soon as the high templars are on creep, most of the time you can just go in with your banelings alone. To clear the units, one thing that is very important is that you move command your bailings so they tank extra shots instead of. See, you can also bait those out because of on creep you can actually micro very well against storm. This, all of this also buys you time. Obviously, I can also since he has die templars at the front, I can just use a couple. And since he's on creep, you guys see how how easy of a fight this is. And this isn't even a fully maxed out high rolling bane army, and that's a stronger Protoss army that they can usually have. Just one one thing in general also, um, if you don't want them to have this many Immortals, Archons and High Templars, you need to get your Hive earlier. S getting the Hive earlier literally is more safe than getting the Hive later. Even though it might uh, seem stupid sometimes to start the uh, Hive at 8 minutes as Zerg, it's actually safer or easier to get into late game if you do that, because your Greater Spire is much earlier, so your Protoss opponent needs to attack with less gas units, which means banelings are going to be a lot stronger. Because if they have enough Archons in front of the High Templars, then it's harder to connect with banelings. But they're never going to have like 10 Archons and then as well like uh, 6 High Templars behind to storm. If you have a decently early... A decently early... Um, hive and Greater Spire. And then the second unit composition is Lur Roadshider Lurker. With this you can actually even make some some uh, spore crawlers because it's annoying for him with the detection with i'm gonna give you two oracles and a bunch of observers the most important part about this is as i said there's a concave usually there's no map where there's this much open space right but you want to position your your lurkers in a concave and in a straight line like take your time Allies so that you're under so, wait i'm gonna show this like this is a lot worse than this right or especially having like six lurkers burrowed behind each other is very bad. 
So now if if he tries to engage into this, it's gonna be way 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 higher. Oh I have zero zero upgrades right now. I forgot to. Oh, actually, that's why the fights were so close. I have zero upgrades. He has plus three. But yeah, try to engage into this. So you're gonna find it very hard. You can also try stuff like sniping observers. Okay, in general, you can just focus on dodging the storms and aim with the lurkers. This lurker is not fighting. Very close fight. With uh, pretty decent armies, usually Zerkas has slightly more more army because we have more economy. So yeah, that's how you get into the late game. Now let's talk about the late game itself, because this is what the video should be about. Uh, the, the first part of the late game is going to be them hitting a Tempest timing, which is probably one of the scariest things. What you're supposed to do against this is get as many spores as you can afford. Really, as many spores as you can afford. Because these are there to buy time. And you still get Bootlords, even if they already have Tempest, because without Bootlords, they can just overrun you. Uh, th they can overrun your ground army. You don't want Infestors first. So let's say I still have some t some of these. We go make Bootlords first, and now after I have like 8 to 10 Bootlords, and I mess all my spores, all I'm doing is making Infestors constantly, because Infestor is the only unit that can properly zone out Tempest, because Fungal Range is pretty decent, and it has a... Uh, radius and the tempest anti-ground attack is not very big um, so let's say i still have some hydras vipers do not work corruptors also do not work Co don't make corruptors or vipers against these tempest timings they're not very good i'm gonna show this and usually like when when this fight starts you should already start having your first infestors and probably newer parasite on the way and then as the fight pr goes on more infestors join and uh, i'm gonna show you first what happens without the infestors? I'm gonna explain how to hotkey the army later on. I have different hotkeys for all the different units. Okay, so now go ahead with the oracles and start fighting. So without infestors, what you can do is the way the range works is either the brute lords are in range of the immortals, so the immortals can't shoot the spores. But if my brute lords are in range of the immortals, the tempest can one shot my brute lords one by one. Which means my brute lords need to stand this far back. And then if I want to guard the spore crawlers with my lurkers, as as seen now, he can actually kill the lurkers. That's a, that's the way the, the range works out on the Tempest. So I cannot I I cannot uh, zone out of shit. I can just stand Allied behind the spore crawlers, that's what assault. you're supposed to do. Like this, and wait and buy time for the infestors. As soon as the infestors come in, we actually he needs to be way more careful with overstepping. Yeah, that was a nice feedback by him. And now the the dance begins, right? See, now we got we got a final on one of them. Now we got some ground shots. In this case, I would remake Bootlers. Usually, I would also transfuse them right now. And you're supposed to have more spores, right? That's Allied forces also whenever you can. Under assault. Neural, uh, Neural the oracles for for revelation. In in this kind of in this case, I actually have I actually have everything uh, enabled with the vision, but Our usually that's not the case. Revelation is one of the biggest spells in that game. So yeah, and uh, like during all of this, the fight goes on, and eventually you will have as many infestors that he cannot do this anymore because you can just chain fungal things. As soon as you fungal the tempest, if they're too far forward, you can start neuraling them. I'm gonna show that real quick. Let's say I lost a couple of lurkers and some other ground army. Eventually, you also obviously want to sack all of those units. Uh, the way to deal with runbys in late game, the most efficient one is link, like a bunch of hydra bane. Those are very good against salad runbys. So eventually, you want to have a brood lord infestor army without. All of the crap, but let's let's say now I have the ten infestors instead of five. Oh, actually, yeah, wait, I have fifteen now. Uh, usually, there's also a mothership at this point, maybe. But whatever, let's just let's just start. You can start poking now. Oh, actually, I'm gonna give myself some upgrades because I don't think maybe I will have one to one at this point. Maybe plus one. He has plus three. I'm gonna give him one air upgrade as well since we want to be realistic here. 
Right now I have my Road Charger Lurker on one hotkey, I can Allies also put Lurkers on one hotkey, but usually I have a run by on this hotkey uh, that I would put Lurkers on in late game. And then one hotkey for Bootlords, and one for Infestors. And now you can see we can move these back, he engages in, our Bootlords start shooting everything. We can focus the Tempest. The ground army does not need to fight. We can focus the High Templars. And we we win over the, the fight compared to before with uh, mainly the Norns. So what Protoss needs to do is keep trading with this kind of army and the strength of this army is that they have a lot of open supply. The army that actually fights as you guys can see is mostly the Tempest which means all they need is a couple of Tempests and a bunch of Archons to zone against uh, Corruptors if there's a lot of a lot of Corruptors and a couple of High Templars so the ground army cannot run in. And then the rest will be used as run by so in a, in a realistic scenario I would have mostly only the uh, Brutalers and the Infestors here. But let's go to the actual late game. This is very early late game, right? And you can delete your army. I can select everything. Right, so let's give us some proper upgrades. Let's just go 3-3. Three, three. This is what we really are here for. Sp the most important part about the late game uh, circuit is fighting around spores. If you're, especially if you're playing against carriers, because spores have a ton of HP. And that's why you should never really try to fight without spores. They tank the interceptors and they they don't cost supply, which is the most important part. So the way you build your late game army is, let's say he has this army, right? Uh, I would only have maybe six to eight, six, seven bootlords, right? But if his army looks more like this, I would have more bootlords, like the less carriers, obviously. You can delete the icons again. And yeah, so you you want to play a little bit reactively, but I would suggest just in general to have like eight to ten broodlords. If there's a big ground army, you can even make a couple more. If there's blink stalkers, I'm not even going to talk about that because that isn't really late game. Blink stalker, colossus, or some shit. You can just make as many broodlords as you want, because that really falls off, and you can just go broodlord and faster. The general army composition that you want, as I just said, was broodlord and faster to survive. But that's also your main army uh, while you're mining minerals still. There is a phase in the ZVP late game where Zerg has uh, has to have a big economy and where Zerg starts mining out their side of the map and just defends stuff. And all you do at that point is not attack, you just defend with spore crawlers, infestors and broodlords, you, that, that's how you deal with the main army and then you have the Hydra baning running around defending, uh, defending drops. So I'm going to show you guys with how little supply I can hold up a very big army, right? You can make up to... Up to uh, 30 infestors. I really only just start making. Actually, you can make as many infestors as you want, if I'm being honest. But uh, I'm just. Uh, I would uh, suggest to just start using Corruptors very late if you're very rich and if you have a very, very big army supply. That's when they become good. Also, against this army, I would actually make a bunch of Corruptors because he has no Void Race right now, but we're just doing this as this possibly his best army shot to break what I have right now. So uh, try to try to break me right now. Wait, I'm gonna give you a mothership too because there's supposed to be a mothership. I'll give myself a bunch of overseers. I'm gonna talk about vip vipers later, by the way. Obviously, you need a, a single hotkey for um, a single hotkey for rulers and a single hotkey for infestors. Usually, I have a bunch of other army hotkeys for army run by vipers and corruptors and queens. So now if you try to break me, you, you, you can already see how how big of a deal it is. So once, space under once you fungal everything, you can start spending infested Terrans. Uh, it's actually lagging, that's how fast I'm spending it. And there's really not much you can do. You can storm, you can storm them a couple of times. Um, this is this is quite branded to be honest. Uh, <laughs> this is just me fangling. Fangling is the most important, and then I spam infested Terrans. 
I do that with rapid fire and I have times for repeat rate. I'm gonna make another video on rapid fire right after this. A very short one to show you guys how this is possible. Uh, yeah, once you get obviously a final on the attempt in combat. It starts becoming real easy. Usually what happen what's supposed to be happen here is the Brood Lord zone the High Templars out and kill them. Once the High Templars are dead, you can commit into Infested Tyrants. Um, don't commit too much because the Protoss can always recall. And yeah, with the with the neural carriers you just wanna focus fire. And you wanna keep funneling his army. This is, to be fair, this is not the absolute most uh, not enough energy. realistic scenario because usually infestors are not all full, ener full energy and I also have like 45, but I just want, wanted to show this to sh show the idea of this composition that is Broodlord and Fester. Um, Fangling the High Templars whenever you see them clumped up is the absolute most important part. And you never want to fight without Spore Crawlers, very important. And you never really want to walk all your Infestors in range of High Templars because Infestors actually die to two Storms. It's a 90 and I think Storm is 80. Or not 80, but I think they die to two Storms. So, um, yeah, but th this is the most cost-effective, supply-effective army for Zerg. And eventually, like later on, you want to get the uh, Corruptors, a couple more Broodlords. Uh, if you actually want to go off creep or not necessarily off creep, but uh, fight without f without your sport crawlers. This was even without sport crawlers, but he didn't have that many high templars. Uh, as I said before, it's very important to not throw all the infested terrains at once because they get stormed. It's very important to not throw all the infested terrains even if the high templars are dead because they are recall. But once you have the majority of his shit fungled and uh, and nerd, it's uh, it's go time basically. And if he recalls, you can still press Neural, by the way, but the recall still, like, the units are still gonna go after. So after the recall happens, don't press Neural. That's a, that's a mistake that happens quite often. And I'm gonna show you guys the other form of late game that evolves around Vipers and Corruptors. <coughs> you might have seen this in Serial vs. Stats. This is, um, this is the way of constantly trading with with picking of units, wait, so I copy this. And now we can actually go off creep. Not enough energy. So we attack those one by one. Allies base under assault. Under well, usually you do not want to actually engage, but there is no way to run here. I think he stormed all the scrappers, that's why I went also into the carriers. And every, having everything bunched up is not actually that bad. Uh, obviously you shouldn't try to eat that many storms. But the idea is usually also there is spark quarters here, right? The idea is you're harassing, you're running around, and you also want to have a lot of overseers, so it's harder energy. to feed back the vipers. Like right now, how is he supposed to ever feed back vipers, right? And, yeah. and you just pick them up like that. Ally space under assault. Ally the forces in combat. Not enough energy. Rulers are dead. As soon as it's only carriers, you can do this. This usually doesn't really happen because there's white rays, so you need to be a little bit more careful and maybe kite a little bit. If there's white rays, you can also use parasitic bomb, otherwise, you shouldn't really use parasitic bomb. Um, like, par parasitic bomb isn't very effective for carriers, it doesn't stack, so. So the idea here is to constantly pick off units while you zone out the High Templars with the Broodlords. I think this is by far the worst late game plan. I think Infestors are much better and also much easier to use, uh, especially if you have Rapid Fire on Infested Terrans. So let's look at the... Uh, 
Let's look at the Tempest late game. Maybe this. A Tempest army would look something like this, and then have a bunch of Void Rays. Some High Templars. A lot of High Templars, actually. Preferably also High Templars and War Prisms. And then some Icons to zone out Corruptors, if I have Corruptors. Whoops, I only have Rulers. <laughs> And as I said before, we're also just making investors against that. But against this one, we want more bootlords because we need a more um, space for for like for error because he he can kill bootlords very very quickly, and we really need bootlords. Otherwise, they can he can just start approaching us with his high templars for free. And one high templar feedbacking for investors that all die because they're full energy is a very efficient trade for Protoss every time. Uh, the strength of this late game army is actually he wouldn't even need this many um, this many Tempest and Wide Race, so usually there's uh, something else going on with Hydra Bane against a Zealot Icon run by or something. But yeah, you can try that now. Actually, wait, very important about this is that his Mothership as well. <coughs> Not enough energy. And yeah, you just want to sit behind Spores, preferably. Spores are also very important to give uh, vision because, of course, he can outrange the. Okay. <laughs> this is some nurse. Some nurse. Okay, once you get one fungal, it's over with this army. He cannot ever get fungal, otherwise, it's super over. never played with that army. Yeah, that's right. So you basically just poke uh, similar to what you did with the ground army. But this is maybe not the most interesting because the uh, micro is very similar. You try to catch units with fungals while being defensive. Also, the uh, again, I don't really have this much army supply. You can use other army supply to, to do run by yourself maybe even. Um, so that's a big strength about this army. Or you can just have 100 drones and get rich. And then once you mine out, like let's say, 7 bases, you can go for the actual push. And now I'm going to show you guys the actual army where it's like where it gets uh, really hard to control. So the la late game Protoss army is going to look something like this. A mothership, some oracles. We're going to give him 200 army supply to make it fair. We're going to have something like this. Um, corruptors. Actually, I prefer having more infestors rather than corruptors. And the corruptors come in af a bit af after the fight, so we're still down in supply a little bit, but that's not that important. I'm gonna hotkey. Hotkey everything. Alright. Not enough energy. So you should always have a couple of overseers with your bootlords for poking, those are usually the ones I siege. And then I have a bunch of uh, overseers with my other army control groups as well. But the corruptor ones are the most important. Also, one trick that is very important in late game is, is this. Uh, go, go forward to do a revelation real quick. Is this. Because they, they won't see this and then you can rev re reveal the Protoss army. You know exactly where the high templars are and then you can actually start fighting. And this one I'm actually gonna fight without the spores. Just to show you guys the power of this army. Ally space under assault. Kind of running out of space a little bit for my. You ran a little bit too far away with the high templars. Forces in Wait. combat. Let's do that again. Basically, you, you need to watch out for where the High Templars are, which is one of the most important fights. Allies base under assault. And try to come in with the Corruptors after the High Templars are already out. Allies base under assault. Allied forces in combat. If his high are this far back, you can just start neuraling, mass neuraling. 
Nurul also should definitely be on rapid fire. Now the trappers go back again because our tankers come forward. We're just a moving our our brutalers right now. But I'm actually gonna press this, so it's more obvious which carriers are mine. Allied you should focus fire with the combat. carriers. You can a move the infested terrans because they can kill interceptors very very quickly. So like right now, I would do this. And with a lot of stuff remaining, which is very important. Actually, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, whoops, bring back your stuff. Allied forces. The one viper is actually combat. just to abduct the mothership. Allies base under assault. The one viper is just to abduct the mothership. Mothership is the most annoying unit in late game. One of the most important ones as well because it uh, denies us vision of where exactly the attackers are. And this, the most important part about Allies the late game is seeing where the attackers are. So this usually should never happen to a Protoss, but it happens. It's very hard to not have happen um, if if one of your investors is unborrowed, right? Allies base under assault. Allied forces in combat. Using his mothership against them. Uh, there is really not that much that we can do. Try to focus fire as soon as you have to a lot of the stuff combat. also with infested targets. Uh, usually you should find it to not let them get away, but I so I had enough not energy enough to the energy. Do it not enough much. energy. But yeah, the corruptors are really just their the finishing unit. Not much not more. Not enough energy. Once uh, once most of the fight is over, you send in the crafters. They don't really do that much against white race. So the the main part is about infestors, queens, um, and crafters. And yeah, this is this is really how how late game is supposed to is supposed to look. That's why so many people think uh, that the late game is very strong for Zerg. I think it's a lot easier to play against Protoss than this against Terran, for example. Uh, I think the hardest part is uh, playing against Tempest and against High Templars and War Prism. Obviously, Soul is just off racing, even though he's doing a fine job. Uh, there's obviously also things that Protoss can do. Also, having max energy on Infestors is not really realistic. Uh, so, I have way more Infestor energy to work with than I usually would, but that's why I also can't stress enough fight with Spores and make a lot of Spores. Spores don't cost supply and they make everything a lot easier. Um, wait, I'm gonna start this one more time. I'm just gonna talk about priority right now. What you micro, in which while I'm doing it one more time. So I'm 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 sending forward a borrowed investor for the for the revelation. So now we have this guy. Now we reveal his army. Oh, whoops! I have investors. Allied forces in combat. Now that we actually want to push, you can try abducting the mothership, but fangling and Allies being out of range with the infestors assault. is very important. Allied now that the infestors are back with Nura, throwing infested turns in general is very important. You should do that first, actually I did that too late this, this fight. Once he realizes he commits to the fight, we send in the corruptors as well. Most of this shit is down. We start focus firing. I mean, this is not even close. So yeah, that's pretty much how late game goes. I can explain my army hotkeys real quick. Uh, I usually have my ground army, which I don't have any right now, on one. I have infestors on two, I have grappers and vipers on three. I have uh, my hatcheries on four, my, my inject queens on five, my creep queens on six. And run by defense on nine, brute lords on eight. Spires on 0 and 7 is also run by or run by defense. So that's how my hotkeys are set up, but you don't really need that many. You can use. Uh, you can maybe even use Corruptors and Brutalords in one, or you just don't make Corruptors. <laughs> like I just said, they're not, they're not really that important. And Fasters are really the magical unit that allows us to take really good late game fights. And yeah, don't attack until you actually have either creep in front of your opponent's base, so you can actually push with spores. Or you have uh, maxed out army supply pretty much. That's when you can push. So once you start attacking your own workers.
because at 100, uh, 120 army supply, the Zerg late game army really isn't that strong compared to the Protoss late game army if they have a lot of High Templars. High Templars also very uh, supply efficient and they can storm a shit ton actually. So yeah, that's the that's the most important part. And that's the video for for now. Um, I'm gonna thank Soul for now. Thank you very much for helping me, Soul. You can you guys can follow Soul as well on Twitter. You can post your Twitter in, in the in-game chat uh, because I'm not sure if it's Soul SC2 or Soul underscore SC2 or something. But also, I wanna yeah Soul underscore SC2. So make sure to follow him uh, and thank him for helping me. I also have a giveaway right now. If you guys want, you can win a free Logitech G Pro mouse and a mouse pad. So basically, really good hardware. Um, which usually would cost you 100 bucks, but you can win it for free. And if you want to enter that giveaway, you can just retweet my my pinned tweet on Twitter, which my Twitter is lambos 2 so make sure to check that out as well. Right now it has like 200 retweets, so it's uh, not even that unlikely if you <laughs> if you were to retweet that you can that you have a pretty good chance to win. So make sure to check that out as well. I'm gonna put all of that in the description. And thanks so much for watching. This wouldn't be possible without the subscribers, as always. Much love. See you guys in the next video.